This speaker is Neville Johnson. He passed away in September of 2019, but he walked with the Lord um, for 45 to 50 years. He would literally see the Lord almost every single day physically. The Lord would come and sit down and talk with him just about every single day. And if that didn't happen, an angel, the Lord would send an, one of his angels to come and pick him up and take him to do something. Every single day he was doing something on a mission for God. One time he, um, an angel picked him up in the morning when he was waiting on the Lord and took him over to Queen Elizabeth's castle. And uh, he gave her a message there, and she did it. And then at the time, an angel picked him up and took him to um, down into the pits of hell. He had to walk down the stairs, creepy stairs, very dark, demons coming out of the walls. But they couldn't see him or the angel. He said he, said he wanted to flinch. He, he flinched. He wanted to hit one of the, the demons. And um, the angel looked at him and was like, like, don't do that, you know, like. Shame on you. Like, but anyway, he got down to the bottom. And he, they were doing inventory on all these uh, mantles and all these trophies that they had stolen. Uh, and tricked men out of, including King Solomon's crown of wisdom. He was told to grab that. He grabbed it and ran up the stairs as fast as he could. And then he was standing before the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. And then they gave it to the Lord. And the Lord told him what it was. He told him that he's going to distribute that crown of wisdom across the earth in, in, the, in, the, in the tail end of the last days, which we're living in now. He also has this scroll of Enoch in his chest. An angel came to him one day and said, um, he was holding this huge scroll. And Neville asked him what it was, and he told him what it was. And he says, well, you got, you got a choice of whether you want to, do you want to eat it, or should I just put it inside of your chest? And so Neville <laughs> chose to have it put inside of his chest. And so he's got the scroll of Enoch in his chest. So you know what Enoch writes about the future. So Neville's been actually been into the future. He's seen the millennial reign of Christ. And he describes all these thousands of his experiences and these teachings. And you can check them out in the playlist. Um, this is a great uh, channel for the end times learners. Um, all the all of the teachers on this channel have had, have had walks with God similar to, to Neville. Um, they, they teach about the Antichrist, the New World Order, the One World Government, the One World Religion, One World Church, the False Prophet. World Bank, the Cashless Society, the Mark of the Beast, One World, uh, World War Three, the Tribulation, the Rapture, One World Court, Two Witnesses, the World Economy, the World Military Force, and the Economic Collapse. So subscribe to the channel and get updated and uh, check out the playlist. Just subscribe to the channel and you'll be uh, keep learning, listen to something every single day. We're remnant. We are remnant sons and daughters of God, the chosen and the elect. And we are the final generation. It's time for us to step up to the place and learn. Because if we don't start learning now, then a lot of things are going to be um, hitting us by surprise. You don't have to be hit by surprise and shocked out of your seats. People are going to be ma uh, making decisions out of fear. And uh, you don't have to. You can make decision out of, uh, decisions out of knowledge and understanding and the fear of the Lord. And um, instead of... Uh, um, being shocked and stunned at all the all the things that are going to be, be happening here in the next decade. So subscribe to the channel and keep learning. This is a great place to start. Listen to something every single day. We are doing this series on foundations. The first principles is found in Hebrews chapter 6. And uh, today we're going to look at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's one of the foundations listed there which we need to have part of our experience in order to go further into the kingdom of God. There are two kinds of baptisms um, listed there. is the baptism in water and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to look today at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, Peter said this, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So that was talking about water baptism. And then he went on to say this, And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Two different things there. It's a baptism of water and the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit or the baptism in the Holy Spirit comes after water baptism. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's after. And uh, we see also when Jesus was baptized in water, the Bible says the heaven opened and a dove came down. The symbol of the Holy Spirit came down upon him. So you have the baptism in water, the Holy Spirit descending upon you. 
Um, Matthew chapter 3 and verse uh, 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending upon him like a dove and lighting upon him. And while the order of these two experiences is not rigid, it is preferable, and we'll look at why it is preferable. You know, water baptism prepares a way for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we have found it a lot easier to get people baptized in the Holy Spirit after they have been baptized in water, and preferably while they're still in, in the water baptismal tank. And, uh, you know, once a person has been baptized in, wa in water, you know, they've surrendered their lives to the Lord. They've gone through this process of water baptism and absolute surrender to the Lord, laying down their life. It's like a house that has been swept clean. Now, to send them away without receiving the Holy Spirit can cause some real problems. And because the house is being swept clean and, and, and then you send them away they're open to attack from the enemy and open to attack from satanic spirits and though the person may receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit at a later date you might have problems with them um, and some, because they may need deliverance from uh, evil spirits which have never been dealt with in their lives and so there is a special anointing to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit during a water baptismal service. Really important to understand this. And those being baptized in water should be taught how to receive the Holy Spirit um, during the water baptismal service. And, you know, we have seen some very powerful water baptismal services where, you know, as a person comes up out of the water, in the sense that they're brought up out of the water, the weight in the presence of the Lord, the Holy Spirit baptizes them. And we've seen them slain in the Spirit for hours, had to carry them out of the tank, lay them in robes as they, just under the power and anointing of the infilling and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, the first part of the journey of the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they kept the Passover salvation, they came out of Egypt through the water, uh, the Red Sea. They came for traveled for 50 days and came to Mount Sinai. And uh, Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 15 says, And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheep or the wave offering. And so after Passover, it says, You are to count seven Sabbaths. 49 days shall be completed. Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall number fifty days. So you go fifty days, they came for fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Now, the Feast of Pentecost was kept fifty days after Passover. They left Egypt, they started on their journey, and salvation kind of got them started on their journey. They went for fifty days. And, and they, then they came to a place, or came to an experience called Pentecost. Fifty, in, in, in the Hebrew means, or oh, Pentecost means fifty. And so, um, Pentecost is a New Testament feast uh, of, of Pentecost. And so, it's, it's, inter it's important to understand this. In the Old Testament, it was called the Feast of the First Fruits, or the Feast of Weeks, because they had to go a certain amount of weeks before they came to this next 50 days or Pentecost to this point. Now, Jesus died on the cross when the Jewish people were keeping the Feast of Passover. While they were keeping the Feast of Passover, Jesus was dying on the cross. And um, when Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible says he continued with them off and on for 40 days. Uh, Acts chapter 1 and verse Three says to whom he also showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them for forty days, and talking to them about the kingdom of God. And it goes on to say, 
And then being assembled together with them, commanded that they should not leave Jerusalem, not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he have, you have heard of him. Now in Acts chapter 1, 5 it says, John truly baptized you with water, but I shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit in many days hence. And so they waited 40 days, you know? Then exactly 10 days, Later, after the 40 days were up, they were to go into the upper room and they were to wait for 10 days. And so, when the Jewish people were literally keeping the Feast of Weeks, or the Feast of Pentecost in Jerusalem, Pentecost came in the upper room and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So they waited 40 days and then an extra 10. And, uh, you know, it says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, um, tells us that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, now they wait the 50 days, or when, the, or when the 50 days from Passover were accomplished, the Holy Spirit fell on them, and they were all baptized in the Holy Spirit. See, it's not enough just to be water baptized. That started the journey. But there was another foundation which had to be laid in their lives. They needed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, it's noteworthy that Jesus would not allow them to go out and preach the gospel until they had first been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Very important to recognize that. And so the pattern is clear. The disciples received the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues. And... Uh, John chapter 7 and verse 38 says, He that believeth on me, Jesus says, the scriptures have said, Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Thus he spake of the Spirit, which they should believe on him, should receive. See, the first they have to believe on him. Passover comes first. And then they would receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And so, when a person receives the Holy Spirit, a river starts to flow out of them. And this river, generally speak, is, is recognized as speaking in other tongues. Now, this infilling of the Holy Spirit is not a one-off event. It, it, it is a way of life. And it's important to teach new Christians that once they've been baptized and water baptized in the Holy Spirit, they need to stay filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, in, in Acts chapter 4, it says in Acts chapter 4, 31, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and spoke the word of God with boldness. So again, they were filled with the Spirit. You know, spending time in prayer and worship and seeking God in the presence of the Lord is an essential theme, time, essentially, to be continually filled with the Spirit. Now you might say, why speak in tongues? Why do we speak in tongues. The Apostle Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Why did he say that? Why was it so important to him? Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 18, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you all. Why did he say that? Why was that so important to him? We need first to understand the difference between speaking in tongues and the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues with an interpretation. When Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all, he was talking about in his prayer life, or devotional tongues, and uh, praying in other tongues. And we need to pray in the Spirit, pray in other tongues, for the following reason. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2, He that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto man, but unto God. Um, for, for unto but unto God, for no man understands, howbeit the Spirit speaks mysteries. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Firstly, he that prays or speaks in an unknown tongue speaks unto God, the Bible says. And what we speak or pray is in the perfect will of God for us. This is very important. And it's quite profound. Because we are told that if we ask anything according to His will, he will grant it. He hears us, and we have that petition. It tells us that in First John chapter five and verse fourteen. This is the confidence that we have that we 
in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desired of him. So when we ask for something in the, in the will of God, it is granted. And so this is very profound. We need to understand that when praying in other tongues, we are praying in the perfect will of God. And that will be answered. You know, many times we don't know how to pray for ourselves or for others. But praying in other tongues, we pray in the perfect will of God. And that prayer will always be answered. You know, likewise, Romans chapter 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us. And so we see that. And it's very interesting that after this passage of Scripture about talking about it in Romans 8, 26 and 27, how God searches the hearts, and he, as we pray in the Spirit, He's making intercession for us, and we are praying in the perfect will of God. And then He goes on to say in verse 20, Romans 8, 28, And we know then that all things work together for good, for them that love God, called according to His purpose, because we're praying in the perfect will of God. Every prayer that we pray in not praying in other tongues is answered. And all things start to work together for good for us. Secondly, when we pray in an unknown tongue, it says we edify ourselves. That's Corinthians 4 and verse 14. We edify ourselves. And that word edify is from a Greek word which means to build a house, to, to build a building, to be enlarged and to build a house. And what does that mean? Where does that house being built when we pray in the Spirit? It's built inside of us. Edifies, or to build something with inside us. You know, First Peter 2, 5 says, You are lively stones. You know, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. That's inside us. And uh, know ye not that you are the temple of the living God. That's inside of us, you see. And as you pray in tongues, you're constructing something. You're praying in the Spirit. Your capacity becomes enlarged. You pray in the perfect will of God. And something is being built. Your spirit is being enlarged within us. And, uh, you know, when we our spirit becomes enlarged, we comprehend God at a much greater level. We're able to walk with God in a much greater level. And... Uh, you know, 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 13 tells us that, Now for a recompense in the same, I speak unto my children, be enlarged. And so we are enlarged as we pray in the Spirit. And this is an important step that we have to make, praying in other tongues, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. The prayer is answered. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit to heal the sick, to pray for people. There's an enjoyment of power from on high. To speak the word of God with power, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you need a life of learning to pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues, so that you're enlarged in God. And all things work together for good for you. This is a part of the journey you have to take, being filled with the Holy Spirit after water baptism. God bless you. So subscribe to the channel and get updated, catch up. We got a, um, This next decade is going to be really full of events. And uh, we are the sons and daughters of God. We're the, we're the elect high priest after the order of Melchizedek chosen. And um, it's time to get ready so we can be strong towers for ourselves, make the right decisions, and also uh, our communities, our churches, and um, our families. God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ forever and ever.